So very exciting uh, that we're able to still at least get together. Even when we can't do it in person, we can at least do it online. So um, I really don't have a, a lot I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of turn it over to Lori and uh, let her just kind of take over the meeting and run it from here. So Lori, we'll let you run with it. All righty. Um, I guess on the next um, list is just the uh, minutes approval for October. Sharon? I don't think Sharon's going to join us. I don't oh. think she's. Okay. Okay. All righty. Well, we'll, we'll get those sent out and we can re follow up on those later at a later point. Yeah. And, and uh, to that point, and to that point, we need to have someone from this ring uh, volunteer to be the new secretary because Sharon's not going to be able to do it anymore. So uh, that that position is open. OK, so the call has been placed out. Everybody be thinking through that. <laughs> mm -hmm. All righty. Well, I guess we can go on and get started. Um, our speaker is Adrian Bowling, and um, so A.D. Bowling's passion for community volunteering, motivational speaking, and intro, uh, I can't even read this morning, give me a second, in, 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 in instructioning inspired her to pursue her journey to becoming a, a life coach and motivational speaker to help individuals and organizations succeed. With 14 years of SRNS experience and five years of instructioning, AD is known for her energetic speaking, engagement in both on-site and off-site ventures. Using her passion for speaking, she has created opportunities for engagement with the community in areas of grant writing, resume writing, scholarship research, volunteering, team building, and organizational motivational speaking. AD serves on the Board of Education Matters and the Savannah River Site Leadership Association Committee. AD Bowling is currently the Safeguard and Security Awareness Program Manager at Savannah River, River Nuclear Solutions. Prior to becoming a Security Awareness Program Manager, she has been a Construction Service Manager, Work Window Manager, and work planner lead at the site. She also teaches grant writing classes for both Aiken Technical College and community nonprofits needing assistance. AD has been awarded the Be the Change Award by aspiring mid-career professionals, AMP, a professional organization development organization at SRNS. She received numerous awards for leading the United Way campaign for SRNS and raised over a million dollars to help local communities. She has obtained her master's degree in business at men and her bachelor's in science of science degree from Southern Westland University. AD also has a degree in business management and marketing. She has obtained multiple certificates in the areas of business, marketing, information and technology, and computer science. AD is currently pursuing her, certif her certifications in life coaching with an emphasis in executive management, small business, and professional coaching. With, without further ado, AD, you have the floor. Hello, you guys. I'm so excited to be here with y'all. Um, can you guys hear me pretty good? Yes. Yes. yes very good. Uh, yes. So I'm going to attempt to share my screen. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me know if you can see my screen. You're going to have to double click on it when you get to it. So when you do the up arrow, then you do a double click on your screen. Okay. Okay. Can you see them? Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Let's see. See that up arrow next to the microphone? Mm hmm. So once you click it, if your document's already open, then you double click on your document. Okay. So it's up. It's doing something right now. Ooh, I hope this works. 
If you need assistance, AD, I can try and pull it up for you. Okay. He's doing something, a little circle going here. Oh, computers, computers. I think the whole world's on it right now. That's it's why. our world. <laughs> Does everybody's excited about the little circle that you always see? Oh. <laughs> it seems like I see those all day long on everything I touch. It's just, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. <laughs> all right, come on. Yeah, I might need your assistance on this one. Debbie, you got her? Yeah. She's on mute. She's probably working behind to try and get it to go. Yeah, I kind of wish I would have did this on my um my work teams. Let's see. One second, you guys. I'm going to try to log in with my Savannah River one right quick and see if you can see me on this one, but the government one, you can't. Um, they try to hide all those government secrets. Even though I work in security, I tell them I don't want to know. I don't know. <laughs> Are y'all seeing the screen? No, no, no. Well, AD, if uh, if a car pulls up in front of your house and guys get out with sunglasses, you, you're probably in trouble. <laughs> men in black. That's what I'm the talking. Men in black. <laughs> That's right. Two guys with sunglasses. Just just go out the go out the back door. It's not good. You speak from experience, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, something's happening. There you go. There we go. Can y'all okay. see it now? Uh, we see yeah. my girl Ursula. Yes. All, All right. right. So we good? Yes. yes. I don't know if this is the updated copy, but we're going to roll with it. Okay, guys? All right. Okay. Let so me know when to move the slides. That's all. All right, so this is one of my favorite quotes. I tell people this all the time. I tag it on all my emails, but um, Ursula is like a person that I, it's like my celebrity mentor, if that makes sense. Um, this is one of my favorite quotes. I definitely say tag this to your emails, but definitely for you guys being in small business, it's so important for people to know who you are. And a lot of times we think that um, people are just going to assume um, the person we are per professionally and personally. And, and I've always been a person that tried to influence anywhere I've been. And for small business and community leaders, it's very important to be present and be an influencer, whether it's positive or negative. We do have negative influencers. So this is just one of my favorite quotes. Um, definitely, you guys grab this quote and put it on your emails, okay? Um, and so we can get started. I'm ready. Uh, next slide. So this is going to be a, a cool topic for you guys I'm covering a lot with um, people around Aiken County and um, in some of the classes I've been teaching. But it's by it's about becoming how to create opportunities by becoming an intentional influencer. A lot of people go, what is an intentional influencer? OK, this is when you're trying to make something happen um, by literally going out there and marketing yourself. OK, this is where you can create opportunity opportunities by um, the pressures that you leave on other people, creating opportunities for their the companies and their employees, for your employees. All right. Goal oriented individuals using strategies to make people aware of their talents, your products and your services. Also, um, you can be intentional communicator, sending messages. One of the things I do is I definitely go on my Facebook when people and I send them back personal messages to the different companies who allow me to speak. And I send different um, messages to people for different companies and things I do PowerPoints for or for my students. So I try to be intentional on that. Um, and also the capacity of um, the effect and the change you have on how someone thinks. OK, that's really important as well. All right. Um, I'm a John C. Maxwell fan. Anybody here a John C. Maxwell fan? Tell me you are. I am. Dominique is. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, is. Definitely. <laughs> yes, very um, good. If you're into small business, um, and even if you're into nonprofits, John C. Maxwell is amazing, him and Andy Stanley. Okay, so I live by his three basic truths about being an influencer. Um, what people forget sometimes is that you can be a, a person 
um, that has like no no intention of making an impact on anyone and you don't know you're doing it. So I want people to know this. I want you guys to know out there that everyone has influence, whether it's positive or negative. That's just the way it works. No matter big or small into a company, if you're the owner or the employee, you have influence, okay? We affect others by our influence, all right? Positive or negative, all right? The thing about influence to me is that I didn't realize even for myself that I was literally in some of my pages that I manage, because I'm mostly a social media manager for a lot of my friends, and literally videos, uh, you can have 50 followers, 60 followers, you guys, and it's 10,000 people viewing the videos. 50 followers, but 10,000 people viewing the videos. And one thing about it is even psychologists proven that you influence at least 10,000 people a day. Okay, that's pretty amazing. Um, some business owners, especially small business owners, they reach about 500 people. But yes, you can influence about 10,000 people a day. That's without any marketing. Okay, so remember that. Also, we choose the nature of our influence. Uh, you can influence positive, negative. I keep saying that because a lot of times when people say influence, they think it's always something positive and you're motivating people. You've been an inspiration out there in the community and, and the small business that you're running. But no, we have people who actually influence negative. We have seen that a lot um, lately. And also, how you how will you influence? You need to really figure out what are you going to do and what impact you're going to make on the world. That's really, really important. You have to choose how you're going to represent yourself and your company. OK, and we have to work to earn, earn the influence that we desire to have. OK, I know I got some bullet points down here, but this is really important for your employees. What kind of influence you're going to have on them? OK, the size and the strength of your influence depends on your effort. We all have to put effort in how we influence. OK, your discipline will always set you apart. OK, you got to be disciplined. And another thing I didn't add, but organized. OK, I love to work in chaos. Anybody else can say amen to that. I'm just a person that can work in chaos, but I've learned to be more effective and be a better intentional influencer. I had to be organized. So that's enough. Also push ourselves to grow and learn. Everything in our, in our, in our fear, everything in our presence um, matters when it comes to influencing. Okay. I know I keep you know, saying positive, negative, but this is really, really important just to find out just how you're going to do this. John C. Maxwell in his books always talks about these basic truths. So I do actually ask you guys to really look into some of his, his things on podcasts, some of his books and explains more detail what the three basic truths are. But when you've been an influencer, definitely we're going to go in more depth of how you can be intentional about it. OK, anybody got any questions on me as far as the three basic truths? Because I love action. OK. All right. Next. And I'll, I'll tell you, just as a quick note, for some of yes. you that don't know, Ron Harvey is very connected to. Um, he usually does an event with John each year. I don't know if he'll be doing one this year, but be on the look for that. Oh, yeah, wow. He already, he already did the event and, and my whole team is, was a participant in it. And so, yeah, it was a fabulous event. Wow. So let me tell you, John C. Maxwell um, on site, like that's basically all the books that we give out. Miss <laughs> um, Lori probably can attest to that, but that literally we run a lot of our yes. um, professional development meetings on his books. And it doesn't even matter if you're not a small business or a community leader, um, being an employee, that's something important. Now, I'm going to bring that to you in a, a couple slides about um, actually handing those things out, but he really does have it down pat. And I love spiritually, um, um, I love Andy Stanley. Andy Stanley, we get to see him every year at LeaderCast, and he is amazing too. I'm not sure if any of you guys follow his podcasts, but amazing um, information um, for you guys. And if you don't follow them, I ask that you, you really do look into that. So some other things about becoming an intentional influencer, because right now you guys all probably either, either you're thinking you are an influencer or you're not. OK, communication. OK, communication is the key. You got to communicate your mission. All right. Constantly remind people of why you believe in your mission, your products and your services. You have to keep doing that. All right. We're going to bring up some social media stuff in a second, but that is really crucial right now, especially during the COVID pandemic. I've seen some people and some of my friends, some of my coworkers who own business, they slowed down. And this is the perfect time right now 
to be an intentional social influencer on the internet because that is all people are doing right now. Even with telework and their breaks are, are taken, getting on Instagram, TikTok, <laughs> uh, Facebook, that is what people are doing. They're being social influencers. That is so important. It's not just for the kids who like to dance. OK, it's for small businesses as well. So right now, you this is a perfect time for you to do that. You got to stretch your comfort zones. Now, I'm, I'm guessing that all you guys have social media pages, correct, for your businesses. Is there anybody who don't have social media pages? OK, there's different platforms out there. OK, so if you don't have social media, you have to start. This is perfect for you to become an attention influencer. All right. There's Instagram. There's Twitter, there's Facebook, they even have TikTok. I don't know if you guys know about TikTok, but I see a lot of business owners gravitating towards TikTok because it's very quick um, to get your message out there and you reach like I, I literally triple of what you can reach on Twitter. But it's very important for you to know what platforms are out there. So you got to get out of your comfort zone when you want to be an influencer. Um, how are you promoting your business? Is it effective? OK, are we using the same thing as websites? I'm going to be honest with you right now. A lot of the, the, the millennials are not using websites to promote themselves because there's a lot of things out there that are free. So when you have Facebook and you have Twitter and Instagram, people are not gravitating towards websites a lot anymore or clicking on links. OK, focus on what matters to you. Um, what, what are your priorities? Where are your priorities at? And don't focus on the setbacks. Always work on your comebacks. OK, I know right now there's a big deals about what's going on with businesses and people losing their businesses right here in Aiken. We had a, quite a few people do that. But let me tell you, don't focus on the pandemic. Focus on what you can bring to the people. People are still buying. People are still getting on the internet, looking at, at, at what to, to purchase. If you're a person who don't have an online business, you don't do shipping, and it's something you can do um, and, 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 and get your business back up, start doing the shipping. Start shipping to people. If you're a person who is a speaker, OK, and you usually do physical events, do virtual events, but you got to find a way um, to, to to not to overcome. That, if that makes sense, I never I never look at my setbacks. There's always setbacks in the workplace, always setbacks in business, but you just need to dwell on the comebacks. And once again, where are your priorities? All right. This is so important. Anybody got any questions on becoming an intentional influencer? And you can definitely share how you are an intentional influencer if you would like. OK, next slide. All right, how to get your staff on board. This is my favorite, you guys. Um, and I'm going to mimic off our HR at um, Savannah Riverside. One thing about, uh, about employees is that when they look at you, either you're going to be a, a positive or negative influencer. If you're a person that the people are think you're a leader and them tell you some managers are not leaders. We all know this, right? Some business owners, they can own the business but can't run it, so they pay other people to do it. All right, that's just the way it works. But employees, you have to let them see your passion. OK, passion for what you are doing. If you don't believe in your product and you don't believe in your services, they won't believe either. That is just the way it goes. So you have to convince them that you are putting best your best version of the, yourself so they can put the best version of themselves out there. OK, so you have to have the passion and believe in your products. OK, create opportunities for your employees to share their experiences when they're working for your company. This is very important for me. I've seen a lot of business owners send out surveys. They want to know what the employees would like to see. They want to know if the employees would like to travel. They want to know if the employees would like the free gifts and trinkets and bags with their logos on it. You have to create those opportunities for them to share their experience with you, even, even if it's negative. OK, let them express to you things that you can do better. I think that's so important. All right. Constantly train on leadership. This is important. OK, this could be a weekly email. I know people get away from that sometimes in their companies. They're busy, but it's, I think it's really great to let everybody know what's going on, especially if you're a small business. OK, you can do this. Send out your weekly emails. Let the employees know, hey, I am present. What do you guys need from me? Here's some new things that we're trying to do and things that we're trying to overcome. OK, you have to let them know what your goal initiatives are and, and, and where the focus should be. But then also put those little blurbs about all the exciting things that you have coming and you want to do. You can even run contests for some of your employees and say, hey, if anybody gives a new idea, you get a gift bag or something like that. Small things matter. 
all right? And get your employees hooked on self-development tools. I'm going to tell you guys, self-development tools right now is so easy for companies, even in Savannah Riverside. As much things that we got going on, we know how to implement free stuff and free and ideas and all this kind of things going on. We can do this. All right. Easy. We suggest podcasts. I don't know if you guys know who Dan Hardy is. Excellent. Okay. He has podcasts. He has a website. He gets on Facebook. But one thing that a lot of our employees love is a Darren Daily. OK, you sign up for it, get all your employees to um, subscribe to Darren Daily. And every every day at 3 a.m. in the morning, Darren sends out just a little one minute message about what's going on in the world or a specific topic. This is great for your employees self-development tool. Also, Jay Shetty. Not sure if you guys know who Jay Shetty is. He is amazing. He has a new book called Think Like a Monk. Couple of my friends who own businesses to purchase this book. Can you guys see this book? Think like a month. And they've been yes. letting their employees win this book. Okay. This is amazing. Little things like this are really great self um, development tools. Also, Andy Stanley, he does come a lot from a, uh, um, uh, a spiritual approach, but he's amazing, have really great um, speakers. So these are some of the suggestions that you can make. Um, to your employees about reading particular books or podcasts, making sure you have those on hand to be able to, to give out to your employees as well. All right, purchase those. And then virtual meetings, all right? I think it's very important to have those kind of meetings and also invite other people in to talk to your organization. And right now, when you're doing things like this, you've been an intentional influencer on your, on your employees. Anybody got any questions on that? Anybody um, get the Darren Dailies? Um, uh, every day or anybody listen to Jay Shetty. I listen to Jay Shetty. Yeah, he's amazing. He's um yes. up, he's 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 been out there for a little while, but he's yeah, up he and coming. But he gives different things on on or even on business, on life coaching, um volunteering. And but he does definitely comes from a spiritual part too. So I really like that. Um so definitely check him out. Next slide. So another course, John C. Maxwell, is it's meaningless to know our value if we don't translate them into our behaviors. Influence happens through actions, not intentions. Our influence doesn't pause when we step off the stage or exit the boardroom. This is very important for small businesses because a lot of times um, we don't really we, we, we don't have a cross between our personal and our professional life. Sometimes we become two different people. OK, for me, I think it's better just to be yourself especially if you guys own the businesses, be the same person that you're in your business that you are in your personal life. When employees see those, those things, they admire that, that you're being your true self. You bring your true authentic self out, okay? You've been an intentional influencer, but you're being yourself in and out. I don't think you have to play two or three different people. So this is one of my favorite quotes by him. So when I talk about social media and I talk about being influenced, I at least want to give you guys some tips on the social media aspect. Next slide. OK, for me, I'm totally getting into it because right now I'm a social media manager for a lot of pages. I necessarily don't like to have my own pages. So my personal page, I just opened it up. So I'm just getting started because that is for the people that I mentor and for my grant writing. But I want to give you all some tips on how I manage my other pages and how we get followers and those type of things. So if you guys got questions in between this time, definitely please give me some feedback on that. So I want to talk about how virtual networking and your social media can help you in your business. Next slide. All right, so here's some benefits of virtual networking, okay? So in virtual networking, you can attend professional events. It's half the cost right now during a pandemic. So this is important, all right? Meet people locally and nationally and globally, all right? So this is the point. We can't get out a lot right now to go to different conferences. So don't let that stop you from driving these people to your, your um, social media, media pages. Do the virtual networking. A lot of this stuff is only $15 and $25 just to join different groups and find out what's going on outside of your regular organizations, okay? You can increase traffic to your social media. This is important. People hand out business cards. They bump phones. They do all that stuff at these virtual meetings. But now they even have buttons where you can send people on these virtual the, the, the virtual conferences your information. That's really important. And it drives people also to your social media sites as well, not just your websites. All right, new customers. This is a perfect way to get your products and your service out front. And it showcases you, your company. 
okay? And then you stay connected. So this is just some of the benefits of virtual networking. All right, next slide. So how to increase your social media traffic. Anybody got a problem with this? Increasing your social media traffic? Or are you guys pretty good? Y'all got a million followers. Anybody out there? There's I'm a little always short of a million. million. Always known for growth. <laughs> I, I think I have seven. You oh, no, no. But let me tell you, it is very hard. Like I usually have private pages, and I just launched my Instagram, and it's crazy because out of the the twenty people that I only had that page for, I opened it up, and now I have almost fifty right on my Instagram. Now on my Pinterest and on my um my Facebook, I have hundreds of people. So I'm, so I'm learning how to navigate my Instagram. All right. But I get like two, 300 views on my videos. So it's the craziest thing. Okay. So social media is not easy. All right. But let me tell you how you can increase it though. So once again, I'm going to put this back to you, attend the professional events. This is perfect for you. Have the cost again It's virtual networking. You meet people, but this is where you can tell people to drive them to your social media page. This happens all the time on my, my, my nephew's page. He is an entertainer. And so when we manage his page, let me tell you, people come from everywhere around the world to log on and see him do his thing. And it is not easy, but it, it, it can drive people to your social media. If visual content is a must, if you have a boring social media page, listen to me out there, people. If it is boring, if it's all over the place, you're not going to get followers. So this is very important for your business to know how can you drive people to your social media? How can they become a follower, a person that every time you put a product or service out there, they're looking to see what you guys got on your page next. All right. So make sure you have those visuals there. Continuously engage with your audience. Be consistent about that. All right. Always, always, always say, I'm going to post on Wednesday. I'm going to post on Wednesday. If you're going to post every Thursday a video, post that. If you're doing coupons or events or whatever, make it like a specific date. I noticed that people are very um, successful when they have particular days they're always posting. Because then we can look forward to seeing what you and your company have to provide every Monday. Does that make sense? Sometimes when you're all over the place, you'll miss it when people are following 200 different people. So when they know to expect that Monday or Thursday or Wednesday, Lori's going to put out her, her coupons or put out her video on her company or have a, a motivational post, we can look forward to that. Also, know the times that your audience is most likely to be active. Can I tell you guys the most the, the times that I believe, especially here on Eastern time, why, what, what times are the best to post? Definitely 8 o'clock in the morning. Now, most of us, if you're working and you're already up at 6 p.m. and you can't get to your phone at 8, this is going to be a little hassle. But 4.30 to 5 o'clock is amazing. OK, so please note that. So normally it's 8 and then between 4.30 and 5 o'clock. That's when you can really drive traffic. So that's when people are going into work and people are getting off normally. OK, so that's the perfect time to post. And then your social media and advertising. It is OK to pay for promotions. It is OK. A lot of people say that is fake. I don't want to draw people to my page. But let me tell you, even though you pay for pr promotions, people are going to either like it or they're not going to like it. So they're not going to heart or like anything that you post if they don't want to. So it's OK to do social advertising and draw people to your websites and tell them about a little bit about your company. You never know. You might get 20 likes a day or 20 followers for the products that you put out that day. Any questions about how to increase your social media traffic? OK, next slide. All right, so here's some of the do's and don'ts. OK, so I can tell you all the things, but I got to tell you the main do's and the main don'ts. OK, do's pick the platform that fits your audience. Now, I know people who can be on three or four platforms and the companies run smoothly. I'm talking about smaller companies, not larger companies, but they pay people to manage their pages. OK, but if you can have a person in your company who can manage four or five different platforms, that is great. But some platforms don't fit certain people. So look at which one is better for you on that first and then you can expand out. OK, so make sure you pick the platform. Definitely keep your business and your personal pages separate. Sometimes I see that people are posting their stuff on their page, and that's fine for your family and friends. But really, if they're your family and your friends and, and your colleagues or your associates, 
they need to be on your person, your 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 your, um, your page for your business. OK, let them support that page and then keep your vacation and your family stuff on your page. Do we agree to that? And what that does is it just gives you the traffic just for your work stuff. And you can keep all of that for your business and keep your personal life separate. Do we agree to that? All right. Share your business valuable content. OK, share the valuable stuff. OK, once again, if you're going on a trip with your family and it's, it's something that you can post it that, as towards your business, that's fine. But just try to share what's valuable to your business on your social media pages. OK, keep everything kind of aligned um, and neat and then keep your board. Your, I can't see that one. Keep your branding con, um, is a consistent. Keep your branding consistent. OK, so I see a lot of pages now that they're paying people to actually um, make their pages all pink or all blue. So all their products are, are, are arranged. So when you go onto the Instagram pages, it looks very neat, like people put them there, like it's placed there perfectly. So people start using people to brand their 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 pages for them. And it's a lot. Those are not um, um, expensive at all to get somebody to brand um, to, to do your branding. So if you already have your logo, just work with a company to actually brand what your social media pages look like. So for instance, if you're putting out like different um, content, if it's just word content or it could be um, coupons or anything like that, get it where you can be able to slide those, your brand inside of that. Slide your logos in every single post you make and have that on there. I see that drives a lot of people to pages that are neat. I'll say, so definitely keep your branding consistent. All right, here's some of the don'ts. Be, don't be inconsistent, okay? Try to post weekly, daily if possible. Daily if possible, but if anything, try to post weekly, okay? Do not have an inactive social media page. When you have an inactive social media page, it's other businesses are going to be posting every day and they're going to trump you, especially if it's something that you're doing as well. Um, I witnessed that in Aiken, South Carolina locally, definitely with the farmers. It'd be one person posting and the next other person posts weekly. And I hate to say it, but the person who posts the most wins. That's just how it goes. So a lot of a lot of us are like on top of each other on businesses around here. People do the same thing. They're not not too many people offering anything different. So then the people who are just constantly posting, constantly open people's feeds, get the most traffic, if that makes sense. OK, and don't overdo it, though. Don't overdo it. So, yes, you posted something on your page and it might have been coupons or it might have been just a business event that you're having. Um, it could be something for your employees. But if you're posting the same type of post six times a day, that's just overkill. So try to post different things, whether it's videos um, in a one hour, pictures on the next, coupons or events at the last hour. But try to do something like that. Uh, don't get hung up on the numbers. I told you guys, you can have seven followers. Somebody told me to have seven followers. You can post something and you'll get like 100 hits. So it really doesn't matter really the number, okay, that you're doing. It's really what you're putting out there. If you've been intentional and positive of what you're putting out there, people will come. Now, this is 2020. People don't necessarily follow everybody, but they will read your content and they'll like it. And if you ever be on social media, you experience that. How in the world somebody can have seven followers but have a million views on their video? It happens. OK, next slide. Don't use social media to impress people. Use it to impact people. Yes, your company can impact people. I personally don't want to post anything that I, I feel like is just irrelevant. OK, I want to post with a purpose. All right, post with a purpose. Anybody got any questions for me on social media? So I have a question. So you said like if you had seven followers and a million impressions. It's just because your followers have um, good reach. Is that well? Here's the thing. Now on social media and even Facebook, people hashtag. Do you guys use hashtags on your your social media? Uh huh. Okay. When you do a hashtag, people have a tendency to hashtag, but never look at how much the hashtags actually get hits. When you go on Instagram, if you hashtag motivational or you hashtag, let's say work grind, it'll tell you before you hashtag how many posts are on, on, on that on that particular topic. The more posts that are on that topic, the more hits you get. A lot of people don't figure that out. So that's the reason why you see a person that might have seven um the seven followers, because people, this is the craziest thing. People don't follow people that other people don't follow. And that's the craziest thing. So if you ain't got a million followers, people might not even click on you. Okay, that's just how that works. But 
they will click on your your, your post because they liked it, but they just ain't going to follow you. That's just the way it works. And if you hashtag it correctly, you're drawing all those people who are looking up those topics for the day. So, for instance, gardening. OK, I hate to say it. That is a really good one. People who do gardening stuff get millions of hits. I don't know why. But you can post something on gardening and then you hashtag um, gardener or garden Monday. OK, and that garden Monday usually gets about a million posts you know, in a day. Well, guess what? You're probably going to get about 50 people who will like that post of your garden. That's just the way it works. So, yes, you can actually have that. And, and on my page on the AD um, Bolick at the Instagram page, you can see that. So I have my 20 people that I normally I keep it private. So I just recently opened it up. And I have like 46 people that I do grant writing for that are all on that page. So now anybody can join now. But I'll get 200 or 300 hits on my uh, um, views on my quotes. I'll get 100 likes on my quotes and I'll get a 300 to 400 on my videos. So that's just how it works. Um, on my, I have a natural um, page as well, um, clubs I have. And I have 400 of my uh, followers and um, they've been with me for a long time. But I mean, easy said and done, I'll get probably 70,000 um, views of my videos. So it just works that way. And it's all about hashtagging. And that's something that a lot of companies, um, small businesses, especially locally, we don't do that enough. And you got to hashtag, find out what's the popular things right now at the moment. OK, if you're posting something on your business and let's say your business is somebody give me something that they do. What is your business product that you put out? Physical therapy services. They're physical therapy. So you want to hashtag the, the important words of physical therapy. You want to hashtag physical therapy, hashtag therapy, right? Hashtag medical. Do you do that? Not at this time. Yes, you want to do that. Sometimes people only do that one hashtag. You want to hashtag everything that's irrelevant to that particular name. Does that make sense? So hashtag physical therapy, hashtag therapy. And I've seen people have 50 hashtags. Now, I don't go overboard on that. I think that's too much, right? But I think that at least having a, a minimum of five, five is my minimum, you hashtag what's relevant to that particular um, business, okay? Anybody else got any questions on that or you want to let me know your business and I can tell you what the hashtag. Hey, AD, this is Daniel. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Sir. Uh, so, so I've definitely seen the uh, hashtags and how many followers are associated with those on like Instagram uh, mm -hmm. and or Twitter and Facebook. Mm -hmm. What about what about on LinkedIn? Do you know uh, because I do hashtags on LinkedIn, but I don't ever see how many followers or how many folks are associated with that LinkedIn? Do you know any tricks of the trade there? Oh, but let me tell you. So I just actually launched my LinkedIn too. Let me tell you, it's weird because I'm so good at managing other people's social media pages and I'm just getting started on mine. So what I do for other people when it comes to LinkedIn, now I go on to other people's pages. So for instance, um, motivational speaking, I would go on to Jay Shetty's page or I would go on to Andy Stanley and see what they hashtag. Does that make sense? Find a business that's similar to what you're doing and see what they're hashtagging. Don't hashtag a person who only has like five likes. I'm just being honest. But hashtag a page that you actually, a person you actually um, like to follow or a company that you like to follow. See how they're hashtagging. And I tag on to that, if that makes sense. Because if they got all those hits, then I probably can get the same hits they can have. So don't start from scratch. Don't try to figure it out yourself. So use what the networks that you already have, go onto other people's pages, even if it's one that you're not following, if that makes sense on LinkedIn and see what they're hashtagging. Also look up and I believe it is, mm -mm -mm, I would have to give it to Ms. Lori to send you guys, but there's a website that lets you know monthly what are the, 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 the favorite hashtags of the month. Um, when, I don't know if you guys remember MySpace, probably. Some of y'all look really young. So you probably don't remember my space. But back, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember. 
Do you remember? So the people always wonder how in the world people used to get like 500,000 MySpace followers. The thing about it was it used to be this really cool secret little link thing that told you weekly of how you can at somebody or hashtag somebody when it first came out. Hashtagging used to be popular then, but people didn't use it. The people who knew those hidden things and what was the word then to what to say. Same thing as Twitter. You know how Twitter is. That used to Twitter is the one who really took hashtag to the next level. Somebody hashtagged something, it caught on, and everybody hashtagged it, right? So that's basically how it was even on MySpace when people used to have like 500,000, like, who is this person? But it's all about knowing weekly and monthly what is the, the rave on hashtag, what is the thing for that month. And I'll, I'll send it to Miss Lori to send it to you guys. And it's a website that tells you what is the it for November and what is it going to be in December. And at least throw in one of those hashtags that are popular for that moment. On LinkedIn, me personally, I go to pages that I like to follow. So me, I go to Southern Westland because that's, that's my alumni. I like to go to uh, Jay Shetty pages. I go to Andy Stanley. Um, I do John C. Maxwell as well. I do probably almost all a lot of the local colleges. I see what they're hashtagging. Um, I stay in my field, so I do grant writing, and so I'll see what is the grant writing hashtag. Because sometimes it's not just grant writing; it'd be something else. And I'll see what they're hashtagging, how many followers, and what their comments are. I hope that answered your question. It did. That's great. Thank you so much. Yeah. And let me tell you, LinkedIn is tricky, ain't it? Even your own parents won't follow you. You're like, what in the world? <laughs> <laughs> I exist. Come on, Dad. <laughs> I'm on there. So yes, LinkedIn is it's 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 all about networking for LinkedIn for sure. Um, matter of fact, can I give you guys also? You guys don't mind if I have a few more minutes? I would like to give y'all some suggestions as well because I see that people are still using um business cards. Do you guys have business cards? I don't use them. You, sorry, yes. again? I don't use them. I use electronic ones. Yeah. Okay. Yes, and I have some, business cards. So some people still do have business cards. All right. So I, I've seen some really sleek ones lately. Um, now we know we're not handing them out too funny right now. Um, but um, I've seen people do like black cards, and it's just the it, it's upgraded right now. Um, black cards with gold labels is really cool. But one thing that I've seen people do, even even electronic, even electronic is they've been adding their social media to their cards. So the person that just talked to me about LinkedIn, the almost every single card that I received when I was doing an event for Savannah Riverside, people had their LinkedIn on their, their on their business card. And that was, I thought that was really cool. I thought it was, I mean, literally, and most of them, I must admit, it was mid-career. But the cards, it was pretty cool to see their LinkedIn and their main social media page on their cards, not just their business. If that makes sense. So know your phone number and your address, but add in your Instagram, your main one. I'm not telling you because I seen one. I told I told him, I said, I know that, that you're, he's only 25 and he's one of my students. I said, but you can't list all 15 of your TikTok names and your Instagram. <laughs> Nobody wants to see that. But your main page that you want to drive someone to and your LinkedIn, you guys, your LinkedIn, put that on your business card and your electronics. I think that's really important to, to get up in a time It's 2020. And I must admit, people are actually getting hired and they're doing businesses and finding um, networking friends on LinkedIn. Put it on your business card. Put it on your contact information. And it's nothing wrong with putting it in your signature on your emails. A lot of people do that. And, um, and that drive people to your page as well, putting your social media and your LinkedIn on your email. I think that's really important too. Any more questions for me? Excellent job. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you for volunteering. Your time. Thank you. <laughs> thank you so yes, much. Yes, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank that you was so great. Much, thank AD. you. And I'll get that information from you, AD, and um, pass it to um, our team. So okay. we can. All righty. Thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Next, um, we have the MBEIC chair report and the review for uh, of CVMSDC.
So I didn't see Ron on. Is Ron no, Tracy Ron, on? I don't know yeah. if Ron made it. Uh -uh, Ron didn't make it. He was in, an, in another meeting. He could okay, not step we can away skip, from. We can skip that because we'll cover that from CBMS DC. Okay. So Dominique or Mr. Larry, <laughs> the review of uh, CBMS DC. So I, I will I will go. I just because I'm just been uh, chomping at the bit here to share the success story that um, I want to share with you all today. So first and foremost, we have uh, reemerged. It's open, and uh, we need everybody on the. Call. I think this morning, but um, I want to encourage everybody to register. Um, I'm going to drop my phone number into the um, into the chat. If you have not registered and you want to register, we have a code for you that'll take 50% off your registration. So I encourage you to do that. Um, so really, just to build on the presentation that we just heard about being um, an intentional influencer. You now I always consider myself an intentional connector, uh, but now I, I might need to reevaluate that. Uh, but we have. Uh, an MBE who we all know, um, I'm not going to name his name just yet, but one of my goals with that MBE was to help him get over $10 million this year uh, because he had applied for Corporate Plus and he didn't get it because he was slightly under $10 million. And so I've been working with him one-on-one -on -one this year, really trying to make some additional connections that he would not have normally made. And then we had a corporate partner who was Volvo who stepped up to the plate, um, I should say re-stepped up to the plate this year. They had been with us for quite some time, but there really wasn't much activity. And they have a new um, uh, AVP at Volvo who comes from the automotive industry who really wants, and he comes from Michigan and he's now in North Carolina, who really wants to turn things around um, at that facility up in North Carolina, the Volvo Trucks Company. And so we had a call with him, my team and I, we had a call with him and we talked about things that could be done and we um, in introduced him to a few MBEs um, that he needed to talk to. Well, lo and behold, today I got a text from Jeff Foster who um, has now signed an eight-year deal to make two major parts for Volvo Trucks, wow. which is going to That's take awesome. him over his um, $10 million goal for next year and the years to come. Um, so we are just elated that you know, the the work that we're doing, you know, this makes my day is going to make his year. But the work we're doing, you know, is realized day by day, you know, contract by contract. This is a huge win for Jeff Foster, um, who is a tier one supplier to BMW and now has this new Volvo trucks. Um. Yeah, that is great. Oh, my gosh. That is fantastic. That's excellent. Amazing. Yes. It looks like Dominique is frozen. Yeah, Dominique, you may have got frozen there, which probably means you're not hearing me tell you that. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, that is good. I don't know how many of you know Jeff. Uh, he's been with us for a while. He's been on the board before, and um, uh, he has a molding company and all that, and it's just uh, it's great to see him uh, continue to grow his business through the organization. Very awesome. Very, very glad for him. So... Uh, Debbie, can you okay. kind of oh, no, it looks like she's back now. Yeah, she's back. Okay. <laughs> can you hear me? Can yes. you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. On my end, it didn't look like I ever left. I could hear everything you were saying. So you heard the whole story, right? <laughs> yeah, we yes. basically heard the whole story. I think story. we did. Yeah. Okay, good. Well, kudos to, you know, working it out and being patient. So with that, I'll, I will turn it over to Debbie. Do I have Debbie give any updates that she has? Thank you so much. I'm excited. <laughs> Great. Hey, hey, Dominique, are we um, just kind of jumping off of that? Are we going to be able to use that as a success story during Emerge? Um, yeah, I think we will. Absolutely. Awesome. Debbie, any updates? Larry? Can everybody hear me? Um, just some updates, yeah. um, you know, for reemerge. You can see this behind all of us with the team here. We're, you know, going strong as well. Uh, trying to get out MBEs as well as our corporate partners to get signed up and get involved in this right here. Um, not to take too much time, but it's a really good platform. You're going to love it. It's almost like you're going to, a, if you can picture going to a convention center and there's all kind of different areas and those kind of things, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, more in particular, I'm going to talk about the general and construction matchmaking event. Um, first of all, we have the um, you have the general matchmaking, which comprise of right now 32 of our corporate partners and different businesses. And that will allow our MBEs a chance to engage with these businesses, more of a 
if you can picture like speed dating, that kind of format, you know, 12 minutes per from MBEs to talk with these corporate partners to give a, a quick um, uh, a snapshot of what they do, how they can contribute and what the corporate partners are looking for. And the other side of that is the construction portion of it, which is um, there are 18 right now, but there are CBS for bringing additional 10 to 15 other construction companies on board with this right here to um, and the premise of it is for those MBEs that are in the construction arena, um, anywhere from, from metalworking to concrete to building material and so forth, so forth. And this will allow MBEs to have a, a very conducive conversation with those corporate partners based off what their needs are. So we're excited about it. Uh, right now, we are still burning the lines trying to get as many people to sign up for it. And um, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a real good event. So I'm excited about it. And Greg may have some more to pass on it. Yeah, no, thanks, Larry. I think the just two quick updates. Also, in in addition to reemerge that's coming up December second and third, we want to make sure everyone knows about that. Um, we have a lunch and learn happening on Monday, so please be on the lookout for that. It's Monday, the twenty third. We have a corporate partner who has joined us. They're out of Virginia. They're it's called True Leave, which is a medical cannabis company. They're going to have plenty of opportunities in Virginia for now, but they are always interested in making sure that the entire region gets an opportunity to hear what they do, answer any questions. So that Lunch and Learn is going to be with Dominique on Monday from uh, noon to 1, 1 p.m. So that's one thing. And we also have brought on a new corporate partner in North Carolina, uh, they actually, I'm sorry, North Carolina, they also have an office in Columbia. So, so they're both in North and South Carolina. It's called Star Electric and just, you'll hear more about them, but we are extremely happy that they have joined us for this year and we will have a lunch and learn coming up with them shortly. That's the update for me right now. All right. All right, are there any other, um, I guess, updates or success stories that um, anyone would like to share with the group? Yes, no. Okay, moving right along. Um, I guess, um, TJ, do you have anything else to add? Um, no, I mean, I appreciate everybody definitely being on the call today. Thank you all very much and um, be looking for the ring meeting in December. Uh, we'll be looking to uh, elect um, the leadership for the 2021 um, stay. So we'd like as many people to participate in that as possible and uh, start getting the 2021 calendar um, all set up. So but we're always here available. If you need anything, please reach out to us. Um, and uh, Lori, you got anything else? I do. Hey, TJ. Yes. Another... Go ahead, hey, Larry. One thing, please. Um, just out of curiosity, are there any new MBEs on today? Because we had um, a bunch of new MBEs just joined us, and we told them to look at these meetings and everything. Just out of curiosity, if any of them joined us meeting today at all. Jasmine Griffin. Okay. Dr. Bedell, anybody else? Jasmine Griffin. Okay, Jasmine. Jasmine was just with us in Virginia. Cool. Good. Awesome. Okay, anybody else? And Dr. Verdell as well. And Dr. Verdell. Yeah. So Jasmine, why don't you uh, give us the uh, one minute spiel? We'll let we'll let each of y'all take a minute and kind of give us your elevator speech. There you go. All right. Um, so my name is Jasmine Griffin. Well, one, I want to say thank you for welcoming me and letting me be a part of the team. Um, Kendra Bower Enterprises LLC is the name of my trucking company. We are based out of Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina. We specialize in expedited shipping and delivery. We run, we run local, regional, and nationally. Um, no load is too big or too small for us. Um, we are ready to network with each and every one of you and others. Um, we also would like to help other MBEs and other people in this world grow their business as well. Excellent. Yeah, that is awesome. Very good. Dr. Burdell? You're on mute, Dr. Burdell. 
It looks like he may have frozen. It's frozen, yeah. Yeah. Froze. yeah so while we're waiting for him to come back, while, while we're waiting, he's back. He's back. Okay. Okay. There we go. <laughs> All right. Uh, Dr. Burdell, Derek Burdell, I am uh, the president and owner of Carolina Rehab Works out of, based out of Raleigh, North Carolina. We provide It's frozen to me. It's yeah, frozen. we may have lost him again here. <laughs> I know they do physical therapy, but oh, there he is. There he goes. Okay, he's back. All right. Uh, <laughs> occupational therapy, speech therapy, uh, to school school based uh, systems, uh, medical facilities, long term care facilities, outpatient clinics, uh, and home health agencies. Uh, looking to move into uh, uh, corporate. Uh, providing direct services and staffing services and also telehealth therapy services as well. Uh, I have uh, uh, I've been a part of the uh, council since uh, last year uh, and we uh, kind of did a, a, a name change. So, but we uh, cover Carolinas, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina and Virginia. And I, I uh, thank you for having me and uh, look forward to networking with everyone. Hey, Thanks. appreciate you being here. Thank you very much. Thanks. Any yeah, other real, meetings? I don't think so, but real quick, TJ, yeah. um, Greg, did you announce a new company that joined us? I did. I did. Okay. Yes. All right. Okay. Yeah. I have one more piece, piece of good news, TJ, um, just for this team. TJ, you are aware of it, but we are Optus is one of our new accounts this year, and um, our our council is moving $200,000 into Optus Bank. And so being very intentional about supporting, um, they are also an a MBE as well as a new corporation. And so uh, being able to support them in that way is tremendous. Very good. Excellent. Uh -huh. All right. Any other further news? All right. Well, we appreciate everybody being on the call. Lori, thank you very much for pulling all this together. And you're doing a great job as a vice chair there. So I want to take time in front of everybody just to say thank you for your time and efforts uh in getting all that together so thank you and we will <laughs> uh, we will look forward to seeing everybody next month uh don't forget between now and then uh we have uh, re-emerged so make sure you're a part of that and we'll look to see everybody there have a great thanksgiving take care have a happy thanksgiving thank you happy thanksgiving bye-bye